Mixed messages over whether there would be new sanctions in the Mueller investigation. Here's some of what he said when asked whether he's concluded that it's not worth the political fallout to remove Robert Mueller or Rod Rosenstein. There was no collusion, and that's been so found, as you know, by the House Intelligence Committee. There's no collusion. As far as uh, the two gentlemen you told me about, uh, they've been saying, I'm going to get rid of them for the last three months, four months, five months and uh, they're still here. So we want to get the investigation over with, done with, put it behind us. Well, CNN, Jeff, uh, Jeff Zeleny joins us now from Florida. What else did the president say about the investigation? Anderson, it's certainly interesting that the president said, uh, really he downplayed the suggestion that has been reported for weeks that he's thinking about uh, firing Robert Mueller and Rod Rosenstein by suggesting that he wants to get the investigation over with uh, perhaps suggest that he wants to cooperate. Uh, we don't know if that means testify, but certainly he went on to really discredit it for several minutes, talking again about how it was simply a hoax, saying it was all over. But he left out one name, Michael Cohen. Of course, that is the major development in all of this, as we've been talking about throughout the evening, and that is something the president did not acknowledge. But he really tried to brush this aside, saying he's been as cooperative as possible here and trying to move along but certainly did not take the opportunity to say that he does uh, plan to uh, dismiss Rod Rosenstein, uh, but he didn't say he would keep him necessarily either, Anderson. There's a lot of back and forth over the last few days on, on Russia's sanctions. What did the president have to, to say today? Anderson, this is pretty interesting because as we know, uh, there's been this controversy inside the West Wing. One of the president's really most visible and uh, respected cabinet members, Nikki Haley, under fire for coming out on Sunday you know, saying that there were new sanctions, are going to be new sanctions coming out against uh, Russia. The president the next day rejected them. That created this back and forth here among who was sort of telling the truth. Why did the president uh, pull back? So the president was asked about this at the very end of the news conference. Um, and he said that, uh, that we will do sanctions, he said, as soon as they, as soon, because they deserve it. But then he went on to say this about Russia. There has been nobody tougher on Russia than President Donald Trump. Between building up the military, between creating tremendous vast amounts of oil, uh, we raised billions and billions of dollars extra in NATO. There has been nobody tougher than me. With the media, no matter what I did, it's never tough enough because that's their narrative. But Russia will tell you there has been nobody tougher than Donald Trump. Perhaps it's not about being tough as it is being consistent. And that has been a question here that is still hanging over this White House. What is the president's coherent and consistent strategy toward, toward a Russia? The question of sanctions clearly was in the works over the weekend. That's why Nikki Haley went out and said they were coming. Clearly the president pulled back. So he said they would be coming soon. We do not know exactly what that means, but he certainly did not say they wouldn't be coming at all. Of course, Anderson, all of this is tied into other matters. He wants Russia to play along in his summit coming up with Kim Jong-un. He needs Russia on his side. So a very interesting summit here with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, but of course all leading into that uh, other potential summit with North Korean dictator yep. Kim Jong-un. Jeff Zeleny, thanks Anderson. very much. Appreciate it. Back now uh, with the panel. Uh, for, uh, we'll get into sanctions in a minute. But Paul, what do you make of, of his comments about Rosenstein and, and Mueller? Uh, I mean, he didn't say, no, that's off the table. He just right. said they're still there, even though people have been talking about this for months. He used to say, I'm not going to fire them. Now he's saying they're still there, which we already knew that, sir. We didn't need breaking news to tell us that they're still there. Um, I think he's setting himself up to, uh, we know from reporting that he ordered his White House counsel, Don McGahn, to fire Mr. Mueller. McGahn refused to do so and threatened to resign. There's another instance where he moved to try to fire Mueller and others stopped him from doing it. So, and then he says three times, we want it over, we want it done with, we want it behind us. Well, we got you the first time, sir. But he's going to truncate this. He's going to, he, he fired Jim Comey because he didn't like how he was handling the Russian investigation, right? He was trying, I think, to obstruct it. He, he, he's endlessly whining about Mueller and Rosenstein. I mean, he's telegraphing his punches. He always does. He always tells us what's on his mind. He, he is going to he's going to fire everybody he can, then he's going to pardon everybody he needs to, and then he's going to deport everybody else. I mean, they, that's, I think, his long-term strategy. I mean, what was interesting in that presser, he still doesn't admit that Russia meddled in the election. Right. He went on this conspiracy theory, he didn't really say it, but he kind of say it, which is his way, of wondering why the FBI didn't seize the DNC servers. 
That is flirting with the conspiracy theory that the DNC email hacks were some kind of inside job, that the Russians didn't do it. So, of course, he doesn't think there should be an investigation because he still won't admit that basic fact. The White House has turned over 1.4 million documents in connection with this review. And I think everybody jumps the gun the moment the president gets uh, upset or frustrated or otherwise or reports out of the White House that the president then is going to all of a sudden fire Rosenstein and, and, and fire Mueller. And I think that's the point he was making here to today, was that, look, we've been cooperating all the way through and that they're still in the positions. We haven't, he hasn't made any moves on them. And I, I don't... Well, he didn't I, say he hasn't made any moves on them, right. just they're still there. I mean, right, they're still there. Right. But the fact of the matter is he hasn't fired them. Right. And, well, I mean, and, by the reporting, though, I mean, the, re the reason he says the media's been talking about this for a month is because he's been talking about it to people in the White House. <laughs> yeah, but right, but last so week we heard been, this is imminent. That. Rod Rosenstein is, it's imminent that he's going to be dismissed. It didn't happen. But the and, reason you keep hearing that, I mean, if you're afraid of being having a witch hunt, then stop putting on green paint on your face and wearing a pointed hat. Look, uh, it is the President of the United States States who repeatedly goes after Mueller, Rod Rosenstein, the investigation. It's not the media pulling it out of the wind. In many ways, it's pulling it out of the actual right, tweet. According to reporting, it's that, only because Don McCann threatened to quit right. the, If I'm the first advising time. the president, I'm saying don't talk about any of this. Right. Right. But, sure. but, but, I mean, that, that's, that's just the way it is. But the fact that the news media is saying, well, it's imminent that he's going to be fired. And fine, that's coming out of the White House because everybody's gauging the reaction to Donald Trump. The fact of the matter is they're, they're both still doing their jobs. Well, I mean, James Comey was still director of the FBI on May 8th, 2017, right? They're still doing their jobs until he fires them. And so we have these reports that a lot of outlets have said. That I don't remember anyone saying this is imminent so much as there are a lot of signs that this may be coming but shortly. But he's talking about thing. this to people. He's asking people in the White House Yes, about and he's this. talking to people. The 30 million people follow him on Twitter as well. And this is, it's, it's not a big secret. And that defense, I think, falls down completely. If he hadn't fired James Comey, maybe i take that at face value. Could he fire James what, Comey? What about the, uh, Kirsten, what do you make of this whole story on, on Russia sanctions? I mean, it's, First of all, Friday night you have the president in the speech of the nation on mm -hmm. Syria saying uh, military, diplomatic, economic, uh, you know, movements. Uh, we saw the military, we saw the diplomatic. The economic would seem to be sanctions. And then Nikki Haley on Sunday says, oh, sanctions are going to be announced. If not today, if they haven't already been announced, it's going to happen Monday. Steve Mnuchin's going to be doing it. I mean, there was a level of detail and specificity there. And then it seems like they called the Russian embassy that Sunday and said, oh, Nikki Haley's wrong. Uh, and Monday, you know, we know what happened. Nothing. Yeah, it's hard to imagine Nikki Haley going out and saying this if there hadn't been a decision that this was going to happen. Right. So I, I think it's safe to assume that at some point there was a decision and somebody changed their mind. And the somebody who changed their mind is probably Donald Trump. If you look at the various actions that ha have been taken against Russia, there have been a few. They're not quite as numerous as the president says they are, but there have been a few. If you look at the reporting on them, they really had to push the president to do these things. And then even when there was the expulsion of the diplomats, he was then furious because we, the U.S. To, you know, expelled more than the European countries did, and he didn't want to look like he was taking the lead. And so what it's been is people really pushing him to take action that he doesn't really want to take. And so, you know, in the end, I think maybe he just decided this isn't something he wants to do. It doesn't make sense that you want to take military action, but you don't want to do sanctions. I, think I, that's I do think problem. there could be a plausible explanation. Of course, yeah. maybe there's a big gun that there was some secret deal for sanctions release in exchange for election help. Maybe. More likely, does Donald Trump want to preserve the option to do business in Russia post-presidency? We know in the run-up to his presidency, he wanted to have Trump Tower in Moscow. He did all the beauty pageant deals. They laid a lot of groundwork there. I think it's very possible that he just wants to be able to do business there with his family as a private citizen after the White House, which maybe would explain why he's willing to engage in diplomatic actions, um, military actions, but not economic. I think it's worth considering. And he, or, he said five times there was no collusion. This is his thing, and now all of his supporters keep saying it. It's not true. First off, as you know, Jim, you're a lawyer. It's not a crime. But there was certainly contacts which were, they were colluding. Twelve different, this is CNN's reporting, twelve different people mm -hmm. connected to Mr. Trump talked to Russians. They had 19 face-to-face -face meetings mm -hmm. and 51 total Contacts. Let me just give you one example. This is the, the, the one of the most recent. Rick Gates, who is now pleaded guilty, deputy manager, J deputy uh, chairman of the campaign, had frequent phone calls in September and October 2016 with a person the FBI believes had active links to Russian spy services. That's the New York Times, not me. That, that's that's collusion. Now, whether it's a crime, I don't know. Mr. Gates has already pleaded guilty to some crimes, but he can't 
honestly say no collusion and his supporters need to stop saying it. Well, Jim. the fact that he had that he had so it's it's likely that the president talked to additional advi- other advisors over the weekend, pulled it back maybe because they need help with North Korea, maybe for other reasons that are beneficial to this country. We don't know the answer to that. To just tie it to collusion or tie it to the economic hey, Donald Trump or the could clear this up interest. himself. Right? If okay. he could just he, tell he, us what the Russia but, policy is. But that could, would be great. Right. But that but what the folks that got they said oh well she might have gotten out of her skis meaning uh, Ambassador Haley. That, the folks that got out of her skis were the folks that said she got out of her skis. Mm. The president has every right to dial back that policy. How the staff deals with that policy after the fact is very, very important. And in fact, you saw an apology coming out of it. Much more ahead in a moment. I'm going to talk with uh, Senator uh, Angus King about all, all the mixed messages on Russia's sanctions. Also, CIA Director Mike Pompeo's face-to-face meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un.